Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my wonderful friend and partner, Ananga Sivir. And today we're going to be discussing the lies anxiety tells you and how not to listen. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shan. Anxiety is sneaky in the way it affects our internal dialogue. And one of the problems with anxiety is that it's so exhausting that we take the lies that come up seriously. And because we're so tired from trying to cope, when anxiety whispers in our ear, we actually listen to it and we believe it to be true. Yeah. We get so worn down, so fatigued by anxiety that sometimes we just don't have the mental energy to to shrug it off or to question it. I think that's always the, the really helpful thing with anxiety when it blows in our ear, fearful thoughts, is to stop and question it and not take it as a truth by default, but we get so tired and anxiety is so clever at presenting things that we fear might be real, that it gets our attention. It really does. And there are so many lies that come up, but there are four that we hear about the most and that that we're aware of and have experienced ourselves. And the first lie is that there is something wrong with you. And Once anxiety has our attention, it quickly tries to share as much evidence as possible to support these lies. And a useful tip that we came across from Susan Jeffers in her book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, is to write on a piece of card, I can handle it. And she recommends keeping that card within your sight and getting used to questioning anxiety's lies and not to accept them, and to continue to look for evidence that you are okay. I will even say out loud, you're okay, honey, and give myself like a little squeeze. Mm. And if you think of the last time you felt okay, and think about what you can do right now to help yourself feel calm and control, you'll realize that through all of this, that there is nothing wrong with you. This is something that's coming up. And you know what to do, and you know you can handle it. And there are many times in your experience that you have been okay and will continue to be okay, no matter what the lie might tell you. Yeah, we're not broken. No. We might be suffering, we might be struggling, we might be dealing with something very challenging, but we're not broken. If we are dealing with something challenging, we're responding normally. And I think it's really helpful to to go to self-compassion. And something that also is worth considering, I think, is when we have these thoughts of there's something wrong with me, if we're fearing that we're going crazy, which anxiety can often bring up those thoughts that you're just going crazy, you're mad, you're losing it. If we truly were going crazy, we wouldn't have the facility to think, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. That actually comes from an introspective stance that is helpful really is thank you for sharing that yeah i just think it's really important again to just look and question and can see what do i need do i need more rest am i drinking enough water do i need more warmth i was talking to somebody yesterday that was experiencing stomach pains due to anxiety and it was affecting their appetite and they noticed that when they got under really hot water their stomach started to rumble (laughs) they started to feel hungry they just really needed some warmth and some relaxation, and then their body started to say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for some food. Such a simple thing. So to look, what do we need? Do we need a walk? Do we need a warm bath? Do we need a a talk with a friend? Really important not to allow ourselves to be isolated by stigma or by shame if we're concerned there's something wrong with us. So often, if we talk to a friend, they'll say, oh, God, yeah, I can relate to that, or, or they'll share something similar. So not to fall victim to the propaganda of anxiety's lies. Yeah, nor to the propaganda of all of the fear that is being spewed at us from the media and from our screens. Mm -hmm. Because if you're already feeling low, if you're already fighting with that there's something wrong with you, you know, in that space of, oh, geez, you know, now what? Uh, There's something something wrong with me. 
that's going to do nothing but exacerbate it. It's going to make it worse. Yeah. And if it's a strong filter, we're going to find evidence to support it. No doubt about it. Yeah. So to turn it on its head and, and look at how can I help myself? How can I support myself? Then we're going to gather information to help with that. And yeah, so many wonderful authors who are available if, you know, if we're finding ourselves stuck on social media, for like, for example, Instagram, fill it with good people. Yeah. Fill it with people who are really sharing uh, tips of how to cope, tips of how to look after yourself and practice different things that, that help you feel better. Just filter out the stuff that's going to reinforce the lies that there's something wrong with us. Because if that's a strong enough dialogue, we will find things to reinforce it. Yeah. And the second lie is that you will always feel this way. But no one always feels anything. I mean, think about it when you're having the best day ever, everything's going your way and you've just, you tuck yourself in bed at night and you just, wow, it was, the, it was just such a wonderful day filled with all the things you love. And, and you have that moment where you just wish it could last like that forever. And even the very best days don't last forever and neither do the worst. And no one always feels anything forever. This is one of anxiety's favorite tricks to freeze us in bad feelings and then to minimize our happy moments, which is not cool. No, or even <laughs> to bring fear into our happier moments. That Oh, yeah, of course. We can't have them. When I was really suffering with strong anxiety when I was younger, I had what I would later call later in my life, like an anxiety tax that I would pay. Mm -hmm. taxation in anxiety that if I worried myself sick sometimes literally then it would be okay because I'd already suffered right started when I was about 10 12 years old really suffered with horrible gripping anxiety and it and it was fearing the worst fearing the worst and it almost felt like a a tax and I think for this kind of anxiety that tries to freeze us in permanence you're going to always feel this way it's always going to be this bad it goes along with the next lie that I won't say yet, but the two go hand in hand, um, is to really try and shake it loose with being in the moment. Because in the, in the spell of one day, just like the weather, we can have sunshine, we can have rain, we can have thunder and lightning, we can have wind. Sometimes there's those days where the weather's really unsettled. But it would be good to catch the sun with some gratitude and not focus on the other elements of weather. And it's the same with us in the course of a day. Something might come up that makes me really concerned, and I can feel incredibly grateful and content. Mm -hmm. And we need to just be in the moment, allow the challenging moments with kindness, and breathe in the other moments, the happier moments with gratitude. And yeah, don't let anxiety tell you it's always going to be like this. And also, negative thoughts often derive their power from being generalizations. So pay attention to your internal dialogue and look out for statements featuring words like always and every. For example, it's always like this or every time this comes up where you're kind of putting yourself back in that loop of pain. Mm. Getting more specific with these generalizations will help contain them and, and bring them back down to scale. And once they've lost their drama, that drama charge, you can start to look at ways to address them. And this noticing of when you feel okay is really a key to this as well, to this lie as well, to stretch those times out, to note them in a journal, to practice being present, to share the good things that have, that have happened with your loved ones or with a good friend, to remember that everything doesn't suck all the time. <laughs> I mean, because it doesn't. We are all human beings doing the best we can in this experience on planet Earth, right? Yeah. We are. And so let's take this always feeling this way or that there's something wrong with us and throw it right in the trash. And remember, that this is all fluid yeah, and that you do have the tools and that you do know what to do 
And on the days when you feel like you don't, you can listen to this podcast. You can find a supportive book. You can listen to uplifting music, all the things that we share with you. You can talk to a trusted friend and you can remember that you are so much more than your anxiety and that you're not alone. Absolutely not alone. It's a big club. It is bigger, bigger than we we'd like. And yeah. And with all we've been through worldwide with this pandemic, it often feels like it's not going to stop. It often feels like we're always going to feel this way, but it's not true. Even this will pass. And in the meantime, we need to take the best care of ourselves and our loved ones as we possibly can so that we can get beyond it. Mm. I think anxiety's got an incredible um, tendency to drain, drain the color, drain the joy from our life. Oh, totally. It sucks the life out of you. Absolutely. Yeah. Really important to just look for those happy moments, even on a difficult day. A kindness, a smile, a you know, a warm cup of tea, a few minutes with a book. Sometimes when I've been going through really challenging times and I'll be outside and I'll just notice a little bird doing his funky little thing. <laughs> yeah, and you said it makes you so happy. Yeah, it makes me re- really smile. I remember um, a while ago I was going through a particularly traumatic time and I was walking in a garden just trying to be present, enjoy nature, take some deep breaths, photographing the flowers to help me really zoom in and and be very grateful for the surroundings I was in. And there's this little robin just wherever I was, he just popped up and he was puffing his chest out and singing so beautifully. And I saw him several times and each time I saw him felt sweeter. And I I felt like he was keeping me company and just giving me some some hope. He was. Yeah. So I took a picture (laughs) of him and put him in my journal. And have that memory. I kept that memory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can go back to that sweetness. I mean, even listening to you share it, your energy lifts. Yeah. You know, that's that's how I felt on my 14-day morning walks on on Lake Michigan. I was greeted every time by monarch butterflies. Mm. Every time. And it felt like they were following me. And sometimes they would dance right around me. Sometimes, you know, I had one on my finger one, you know, <laughs> one day. And that for me, so joyful and it's such a small thing, but it's part of of stretching out, feeling okay and realizing there's just, again, so much great and crushing beauty in our lives to be grateful for, even on our lowest days. Yeah. I think it's like panning for gold in the the gold rush when people would go in the rivers and sift and sift and sift. And they were looking for tiny glinting specks. Yeah, you know, most of what they were sifting was of no good to anyone. But then you find that little speck of gold, and that's how I see it. When we feel low, when we're suffering with anxiety, look for the gold. Just go and find those little bright moments and mm. gather them and, and note them because it's really good to go back to them and remember. And and when I do that, in, I've shared before that I have a journal, a journal on paper, but also I have a digital journal. It reminds me, it say on this day three years ago, on this day four years ago, and I've been doing it for about eight years, so I get a lot of on this days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most days there's like three or four things come up, and things will come up from really difficult times in my life, and there it is, there's the gold. And I think, wow, that was a really hard time, and I was really suffering, but there was so much kindness. Yeah. I received so much kindness and support, and my friends are incredible, and oh yeah, the robin will come around, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this day we'll come around yearly and I'll remember him and it's really helpful to me and often I see that I was really trying to cope well better than I would have given myself credit for had I not noted it down yeah I really recommend journaling as a daily practice me too after the break we'll come back and and share lie number three and lie number four Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Taking care of your mind is more important than you can possibly imagine. How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's really, really important to invest time and care into keeping your mind healthy. There are many ways to support a healthy brain. 
whether that be crossword puzzles, learning a new language, making time for power naps, and of course, there's better help online therapy. Sometimes therapy is actually one of the healthiest things that you can do for your mind. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off at betterhelp.com slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com slash slayer. Before the break, we shared lie number one, that there is something wrong with you, and lie number two, that you will always feel this way. And we debunked both of those. <laughs> and now we're moving on to lie number three. And this is, this is a big one. Nothing works. And when you come up with that, when that is what's entering your mind, that nothing works, please look at the success stories of others with a curious and open mind and keep trying to find what works for you. In our private Facebook group, we hear on occasion that nothing works. No matter what I try, nothing works, or EFT doesn't work, or breathing doesn't work, and it goes on and on. But again, that's part of the lie. Anxiety wants you to think, your mind wants you to think that nothing works. We invite you to pick one technique and try it every day for two weeks. Make it a game. Uh, You can draw uh, 14 boxes for the next 14 days and make sure you tick each box. Or um, there's an app that you can get. What is the app that you can get? Oh, there's several like don't break the chain apps. Uh, There's one called Streaks. Okay. There's another habit one where you, yeah, you get a little reminder and you just tick your box every day. And the the idea is you don't break the chain. So you're committing. It helps you commit to 14 days. Yeah. Yeah. And and the techniques that we recommend for increased resistance to all of these lies that anxiety likes to tell us is number one, the, the long exhale practice. And that you do that for a minimum of five minutes a day. So you might start with a couple of minutes in the morning and do a couple of more midday and a couple again at the uh, end of the day before bed. And the long exhale is so easy to do. You just you inhale for a count of four, you hold, and then you exhale for a count of seven. And you just repeat and repeat and repeat. And you will feel so calm and relaxed after doing that practice. It's a wonderful. I still do that practice often before bed. Just kind of something that I do. Also EFT tapping for anxiety symptoms. You can make that something that you practice. That's something that once you get it, it will never leave your toolkit. But there's that moment from just learning to getting it where people feel like, well, I don't know, that doesn't work, or they feel silly, or um, am I doing it right? Or then they get into judgment and don't, don't judge yourself. Go to anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT. And there's information there for you to tap through. We also do tons of tap through guided meditations on our Patreon. We did one in uh, episode, I think it was 554 or 555. We just did a a guided tapping session for, it was the anxiety attacks episode. Yeah, that's a good episode to look up. It was fear of having an anxiety attack away from home. So that's really helpful now as we're moving out back into the world. We're hearing from many people who are suffering with that kind of reintegration into being around people. So that's a good practice to follow along with. But we have some in our free course in the Anxiety Slayer Academy on Teachable. And we have many on Patreon. So if you're worried about doing it right, just come follow along with us. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course, additional techniques, guided relaxations and breathing practices. And again, anybody who's been listening to us for for a while, you already know that we've got guided relaxation albums and breathing practices and all kinds of information on the website, on our Patreon and the Academy. Uh, All across the board, we have information and practices that will support you. So we invite you to just 
Pick a technique and try it every day for two weeks. Pick one and try it. And kind of in defiance of your mind, if the mind says nothing works. Yeah, in defiance of your mind. And we, we want to hear from you too. How did it work? How did it feel? Um, Definitely. Yeah. What did that look like for you when you got to the end of the 14 days? Mm. What is lie number four, Ananga? Well, we already touched on it. <laughs> it's a dark lie that you're losing your mind. Yeah. And we may fear that, you know, we're, we're losing it. We're going crazy. We can't cope. Um, our mind may be disturbed. Our mind may be giving us difficulties, but it can be supported. We're not our body. We're not our mind. This is the teaching behind Ayurveda's wonderful wisdom for how to live a long, and calm, and happy life. So it teaches that we're not our body. We're not our mind. And thoughts aren't facts. And that's also a, th- a thought. It's a lie, but it's a thought. You're losing your mind. It's a false, a false thought that we need to just nip it in the bud, as my mother would say. <laughs> Thoughts aren't facts, and there's a lot we can do to support the mind. And often when we have this kind of anxiety, there's an energy in the mind that's really running and pushing, and we might feel, I'm not, I'm not myself, I'm not functioning properly. I've had times like this where I've been really going through a lot of stress, and I think, oh my God, I'm, you know, am I socially acceptable? My mind's really pushing through, and it's, and it's rattling. And we need to slow down. We need to slow down. We need to make sure we're resting. We need to make sure we're feeding our mind an alternate reality. Feed it something good. Feed it something hopeful. And really don't believe the propaganda. Yeah, we, we cannot believe everything we think. No. <laughs> it's traumatic to believe everything we think. And uh, it's really helpful to, to read others who are brave and transparent enough to share their feelings and their experiences. And, and you'll see that there are so many people have terrible thoughts. People have terrible thoughts after having a baby. They might have fears about harming the child. The mind really can be a stinker. You just made me think about, I had dreams that I would put my daughter into the kitchen cupboard because she would be safe there like safer in the kitchen cupboard than under my care. So I would just put her in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would wake up and remember, obviously I still remember the dream because it was just so bizarre. But yeah, I mean, there we have all of these really big life changes that, that happen yeah. throughout our lives, whether it's having children or moving away from home or uh, getting married or moving house or getting divorced or going off to school, you know, all the things. And speaking of memories that come up, somebody asked, where were you in such and such a year? And, and I went to the year and I was like, oh my gosh, in the same year, I got married, moved house, took a new job, and the house was in a brand new city, all at the same time, all at once. And you want to talk about thinking you're losing your mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what do we know about change? Right. We know that change disturbs vata, which is the energy that gives rise to anxiety. So any transition, any change increases vata. We need to look at cause and effect instead of going to that big panic. That, oh my God, what's wrong with me? This, this has changed in my body. This is different. You know, my mind feels out of control. My mind's telling me I'm crazy. Actually, we don't even usually think it's our mind. We think it's us. Yeah, we do. It was a huge change in my life when I learned to say my mind, like my shoe or my coat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. You know, it's not me. But with anxiety, we just say, I'm going mad. But when you can say my mind is disturbed and my mind's throwing up these thoughts, there's a part of you that's watching that and there's a part of you that's saying that. And that's the part of you that can get it calmer and in a better place. That separation is helpful. Yeah, detaching away from the mind because it's taught that the mind is easily disturbed and it's incredibly disturbing. It's disturbing us. That's its default setting. But we can learn to work with it and calm it and use our intelligence to to nurture it and support it. And that's a completely different experience of life. Instead of thinking, oh, you know, I've got this pain and I'm going to, 
get sick and there's something wrong with me and going to fear, we can think, well, what does that need? Does it need warmth? Does it need massage? Yeah. What do I need? How can I respond? Because it's telling us something and we need to, we need to respond or it's going to shout because we're not hearing. So really to question when we fear we're losing our mind, how can I help myself steady out? And usually we need to feel more grounded. That's the first place to start to really get grounded yeah it's so very helpful to be grounded it's you know, one of the reasons why i continue my morning walks mm-hmm. because it, it helps so much and as you were talking i was thinking about i used to say oh, i'm a crazy person and i realized that to a degree i am absolutely a crazy person but in a good way <laughs> <laughs> but but the repeat of um, I'm a crazy person, or I'm going crazy, or I'm crazy. Uh, you have to be mindful of that. It's a very slippery slope because mm-hmm. you start to believe it and you, you start to become something that you're not because of repeating. And it wasn't even something that I was conscious of until, I don't know, you and I were having conversations and it would come up and I would say that and then you would kind of bust me on it, catch me on it in your sweet way. And so I've been much better about understanding that the, the crazy one in me is more the wild one in me. Yeah, right. Not the one that's feeling like her mind is unsteady or, or that I'm losing my mind. There's a difference. And so just by it, replacing that word, it makes it feel different. Yeah, it's a, it's a powerful redirect. Yeah, it is. And yeah, we need to watch those words and, and we need to um, just slow down, be kind and see what we can do. And it's amazing how a tiny change in the right direction makes such a difference. It doesn't have to be big things. We don't need to do big things and we don't need to figure it all out, which is good because we're not going to when we're anxious. Our mind's too jumpy. That's something, that's what comes later. But first, slow down. What do you need? What helps? Always keep in mind what helps. And that's another wonderful benefit of journaling is to note down, how did you get through a difficult day? What did you find to help yourself go to bed at night feeling feeling better, feeling like you supported yourself? When we write them down, we reinforce those positive actions and they're there to go back to. We're all going to have these moments when we feel like our mind's suffering unbearably and it's and it's out of control. It's part of the human experience, but it's what we do with it, what step we take next that really makes the difference. I, I always feel greatly benefited by reading people like Dr. Edith Eager, who shares from her intense experience in Auschwitz. How does somebody who goes through something so horrific find joy and peace and hope in life again? And I I feel like, well, if they can do it from going through something so incredibly, unimaginably horrible, then, you know, what's their secret and what can I learn from them? And one key lesson I learned from Edith Eager is she asks, what now? Not why me? What now? What next? And I think that's a very powerful question. Well, there you have it. There are the four lies that anxiety tells you and how not to listen. We invite you to be sweet with yourself and really make it a practice. Take on our challenge. Take on the 14-day challenge and see what technique or practice might work for you. No matter what it is, pick one, give it a try, and then let us know how you do. And thank you so much for listening to Anxiety Slayer. We're grateful that you listen in each week. And if you love our podcast, we invite you to become a patron for loads of Anxiety Slayer extras. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer.